All right, good afternoon, everyone. Um, we would like to welcome you to our uh, fall 2020 higher and post-secondary education applied project poster session. Um, thank you all for being here. Um, well, first, we'd like to, of course, welcome our, our, our presenters um, and our graduate students who will be sharing um, with you all shortly about some of the work that they've done over the last uh, 15 weeks, although in many cases for many of our students, this represents um, a longer engagement with the topic, whether it's through their own professional careers or through practicum experiences. Um, but what this culminating um, project will give you an opportunity to do is to learn a little bit more about um, the things that they've been able to research and gather data on and share findings related to uh, critical and timely issues within higher and post-secondary education um, context. Um, I should, should have start by saying my name is uh, Kia McGuire. I'm an associate professor in the higher and post-secondary education program. My gender pronouns are he, him, and his. Um, and I would also like to acknowledge the ancestral homelands of the Akami, Atham and Pipash people's lands, which we all are working from and learning on. Um, and so I would like to start by simply sharing a little bit about the program and more importantly, where this project fits within that um and the, within students learning experiences and then i'll turn it over to my colleague uh, dr mcintyre who will share a little bit more about the floor of the events um, for today um so um again our higher and post-secondary education program um, is is an opportunity um, and a learning experience that's really geared to prepare uh, professionals to work in a variety of contexts on college and university campuses um, one of the things that is uh, has become a core identity of our program um, has been the process by which we uh, help um, and work alongside students as they learn uh, uh, ways to gather data, um, analyze data, um, all in the service of improving um, um, higher education practice and policy uh, wherever they may be located. Um, and so this applied inquiry or applied project uh, that poster session that you see here today is a, is a culmination of a 15 week um, exercise or experience during the first seven and a half weeks, our students have an opportunity to design a project. Um, of course, these projects are um, oftentimes very ambitious. And over our 15 weeks, we are able to pare it down um, into something that is not only manageable, but that will be impactful with the data that they're able to gather. And then in this uh, session B of the semester, uh, students are able to uh, carry out and, um, their research project. Um, and we'll get a little bit towards this at the end of the, the uh, um, session today when we give some thank yous, but you should know it's, this represents not only the work of our students and the faculty who are in the classroom, but also um, a number of mentors who sign up to um, work with students along and, and help give feedback on their projects as they're being designed and carried out. Um, so we look forward to you all engaging with our um, students today, um, asking them questions, learning about uh, their research, um, and hopefully having a very um, invigorating conversation. So at this point, I'll turn it over to Dr. McIntyre, who will say a little bit more about how the rest of the afternoon will be spent. Thank you. Hi there. My name is Lisa McIntyre. I am an executive director in the university provost office at ASU and teach um, in the master in higher ed program. Um, the applied project is one of my favorite classes um, because as Dr. McGuire said, this is about the topics that the students are most interested in. And so I always learn a lot um, about topics that I maybe don't get exposure to on a regular basis. So I hope um, all our guests um, have that same experience. Um, our students will be presenting um, in small breakout rooms of three to four folks. Um, Dr. McGuire is gonna put a link um, in the chat where you can find the Zoom breakout room link for the individual that you're here to support um, or the breakout room that you're most interested in. Um, they are grouped uh, by topics. Um, we ask that you mute your um, microphones. You're all doing a great job of that if you're not the one presenting. Um, we will present in order of the link that um, Dr. McGuire just shared. There will be a facilitator in the room to just kind of make sure all the technical uh, pieces go right. They will be recorded sessions. We also ask that you hold all your questions until all of the presentations in your breakout room are complete. Um, and then we'll open up that session for questions. We do encourage you to ask questions. Um, these folks are experts on this topic um, and have spent a lot of time and energy 
um, becoming experts. And so um, this is a great opportunity for them to, to answer any questions that you might have. Once all the presentations in your breakout room are complete, we ask you to come back to this main session room um, for us to wrap up the program. So with that, um, Dr. McGuire, anything I missed or you want to add before we break out? Nope, oh, that, that's it. And please reach out to us um, for um, any questions that you might have. Dr. McIntyre and I will be, will be moving from room to room. I see that I just got a message in the chat asking, can, you, can individuals move from room to room? Uh, yes, as long as you're not a presenter. So all of our, our guests beyond the students are able to, um, again, move um, as you would like to bounce around to hear different topics um, of conversation and discussion. Um, and so again, at this time, we'll give folks about you know five to seven minutes to make your way over to your rooms. Um, for, for our students who are on the call, again, look at the sheet as well so that you can go to the room that you will be in. Um, and yeah, I think that's it for now. So thank you and welcome all again. Okay, so hello, my name is Callie Harriman and I will be talking to you today about the effects of COVID-19 on ASU graduate student parents. So since we're not able to meet face-to-face, -face, uh, here's a little holiday pick preview for you all. Uh, as you can see, I'm sitting with my 11th month old son, Jack. He is the inspiration for this little passion project of mine. I had Jack the day after Christmas of last year. I was scheduled to go back to work following maternity leave the day it was announced that everyone would be working remotely due to COVID. So I've been working remotely since and returned to class this fall in order to complete my master's in higher education and uh, post-secondary education. Uh, so my mentor phrased it perfectly. This semester, you're gonna be eating a lot of ice cream. So make sure it's a flavor you like. Um, so because of that, I chose to focus on graduate student parents and how they're coping with the COVID-19 pandemic. So for my research problem, I noticed that without the pandemic, graduate student parents face extra challenges compared to the typical childless graduate student. Um, they have additional financial obligations that come with caring for a child. Time management becomes a struggle when children require care. Um, coordinating childcare can be a struggle. And the salience of guilt is a big one. Uh, this is when parents feel an overwhelming amount of guilt for spending less time with their children so they can focus on other things in life, such as school and work. So this brings me to my research question. I wanted to examine how graduate student parents were coping as a parent and as a student. Did anything change emotionally or physically? Is it better or worse since the pan pandemic hit, et cetera? And the methodology that I used was an online survey. Um, I decided to study ASU graduate students since I had easier access to the student population. Since we were in the thick of COVID, I decided an online survey would be best method to collect information. I requested um, from a contact that I knew in the ASU student parent network to distribute my survey. And then I also contacted the MBA coordinators, asked if they could distribute it. Um, I sent it to a few PhD students in um, the economics department that I work in who I know that are also parents. And I use snowball sampling by asking anyone who came in contact with the online survey to share it with any ASU graduate student parents they knew. Um, in addition to that, one of the PhD students that I knew was in um, GPSA. This is another graduate student organization. So they agreed to distribute the survey for me as well. I ended up receiving 26 complete responses to my online survey, um, which brings me to my findings. So in my opinion, I had a fair mix of participants. Um, it was exactly an equal amount of men and women. They were mostly full-time master students and I had only one single parent while the rest had partners. Uh, 
Um, when I asked students about their experience as a parent during COVID-19, the data was distributed fairly even. However, when you take a closer look at the data, women had much higher values on the Likert scale compared to men. So this means that women tend to think that the pandemic has affected their performance as a parent negatively, while men, men's opinions varied. Um, when I decipher the open answer responses to um, when I question the possible benefits of the pandemic, 23 out of 26 participants mentioned um, the benefit of being able to spend more time with their children. And then when I asked participants about their experience as a student during COVID-19, uh, once again, if you look at the data as a whole, uh, there is not a noticeable, I guess, uh, swing in data, but there is once again a difference between men and women. Women reported much higher values, uh, therefore they felt their performance was affected negatively. While men didn't show a trend regarding the pandemic affecting um, their success as a student. So students were uh, also asked how their motivation as a student was affected. Women reported higher values for negative effects on student motivation while men reported the opposite. Um, this means that men felt that their motivation actually increased during the pandemic, while women felt that their motivation decreased as a student. So um, overall, the data seems to slightly lean towards a negative impact on support system access and time management. While there is a more noticeable increase on stress levels, there was no significant trend among men when asked about access to school resources and their support system as a parent. Uh, most women seem to think that they had less access to resources as a student, as well as their support system as a parent during the pandemic. When asked about time management skills, women reported that they were having more difficulty managing while men's answers did not follow a trend. And the most noteworthy data that I discovered, as you can see in this fig figure, uh, was questioning participants' stress levels during the COVID-19 pandemic. So men showed no significant inclination regarding the question. Well, you can see women um, 100 admitted their stress levels increased during the pandemic. And then I wanna to talk to you about some common themes that I found in my um, open text questions. Uh, while many open responses mention the benefits of spending more time with family, the overwhelming theme from participants' responses were increased stress levels. One survey reported, it has been an opportunity to get closer as a family, but also a major stress at some times. I feel that people expect all of our work to continue as if nothing has happened, with the pandemic hitting worldwide, there are so many preoccupations and concerns dealing with family and security that it is often not possible to keep up. Another participant mentioned their thoughts on the university's efforts. They said, it's stressful, feels like a lack of support or compassion from the university. I feel like literally everything is harder because of balancing more responsibilities with no help. So finally, we come to the implications of my research. Um, in general, I think there's always additional research that can be done. A much larger scale of survey or information would be helpful. But from what I discovered on my smaller scale, it seems that the university should really focus on developing a method for identifying or recognizing um, student parents. Currently, the university doesn't track this information, so it's very hard to make sure the students are receiving the support they need. Most students surveyed were completely unaware ASU offered any additional support to them at all. Uh, furthermore, students seem to really be struggling with convenient or available childcare options, uh, either offering childcare on site to students or offering any type of financial support for childcare, I think would help immensely. And then finally, a solution to decrease these student stress levels um, really needs to be focused on. This could be improved with expanding childcare resources, but maybe introducing counseling, counseling or workshops um, for parents would help reduce stress 
um, just investigating that more, I think would definitely help. Um, there is unlimited room for improvement when it comes to addressing this particular student population struggles and need for additional resources, um, but definitely more research and recognizing the student population would be a great start. So this concludes my presentation. I wanna say thank you. And um, I think we'll do questions later. So thanks again. Thank you so much. <laughs> so um, thank you for that, Jordan. Um, so I have to say, this is my first time participating in a, a virtual uh, poster session. And um, that felt like a whirlwind, but in a good way. Um, so thank you all for your presentations. Uh, both Dr. McIntyre and I had an opportunity to hop around from room to room. Um, I'm actually gonna stop talking and turn over to Dr. McIntyre and I'll say a little bit more to, to close us out at the end. All right, I just wanted to congratulate all of you. You should be very proud of what you did. Um, I know this semester was like none other. Um, just like Dr. McGuire, that was my first um, virtual poster session. Um, and I just want to commend you all on your resilience and determination um, in making it work. We had all kinds of fun challenges to work through um, and we all did it and had great communication. And I think um, you you all just the potential is, is limitless for all of you. So I wish you all the best of luck. Um, I hope to hear updates from you all where your careers take you and um, always here as a resource for, for you all. So um, I see all the applause and uh, celebrations going up. Um, it might be a bit much to unmute and do a round of applause, but I um, uh, want to thank all the guests, um, family members who were able to join us today. Um, that is one of the great things about our virtual um, opportunity is that I think we might have been able to expand our, our audience a bit more. Um, we will be sharing recordings with the students. So if you weren't able to have a guest join us today, um, please share it with them. Um, there's no way any of us would have made it through this program without all the support of our family and friends. Um, and I also wanna thank our colleagues. Um, so every student in, the, in this part of the project has access to a professional mentor who's met with them multiple times throughout the semester and giving them feedback and encouragement. And so, um, thank you all for, for doing that for our students. It really um, was great to see the, the feedback and insights and having that other perspective to bounce ideas around was really helpful and benefited the work. So, um, all right, well, I'll stop gushing. Uh, Dr. McGuire, <laughs> what did you have? Yeah, so just one more um, uh, thank you before we move on, which is to Jody um, and her team um, who have handled all the logistical um, um, responsibilities for today is setting up the virtual rooms, making sure that all the Zoom links work and making sure that we have facilitators in each room. So thank you to Jody, uh, Ashley, Pinnock, Liam, Liam, Caitlin uh, for your support um, and making sure that this program went off uh, without any hiccups. So, so thank you all very much uh, for making this easy for Dr. McIntyre and myself. Um, I also would just like to echo Dr. McIntyre and thank our mentors. Um, um, usually we have like mentors and program instructors like raise their hand. Um, I think there's a reaction to do that. So if you know how to raise your hand or put a thumbs up, maybe <laughs> if you want to put a thumbs up, how about that? Um, so that we can acknowledge all of our mentors and program faculty who teach and work alongside our students throughout the program. Um, your support is sincerely um, and deeply appreciated. Um, as you all know, I think one of the biggest strengths of our program um, is that we have meaningful and long lasting relationships with individuals who are um, educators and scholars uh, working both at ASU, but also um, across the valley um, and sometimes in, as well as in uh, other states. And so um, we appreciate uh, the support that you provide and, and the mentorship and uh, the learning that you, or the, the way that you help to expand the learning of our students in our program. So thank you very much. Uh, for that. And most importantly, I want to say uh, congratulations and thank you to our students. Um, I'm sure as it cannot go um, overstated, I think, how unique this semester um, has been. Um, and you all um, continue to um, approach the project um, and your uh, capstone experience with um, enthusiasm, 
uh, with a level of dedication, um, a level of um, uh, flexibility and creativity uh, that I think um, I was just excited to see and gave me also energy as I entered um, and worked with you all over the last seven and a half weeks. Um, and so I know very few things feel like um, it's, it's normal as far as celebrating things in this particular context, but we do hope that you will find time to honor this moment in some way uh, to reflect back on all of the hard work that you've accomplished over your time in the program um, and that you are able to enjoy at least a moment of reprieve with family and friends and colleagues um, because what you have accomplished um, not only today and throughout the semester but over the program um, is definitely worth uh, celebrating. Um, and it has been our pleasure um, to be on this journey alongside of you. Um, so there's just two more things before we wrap up. So first one is kind of a, an announcement of sorts, which is at the very end, we'll ask all mentors, uh, program faculty and students to stay on uh, the call so that we can take um, a photo. Um, we may have to take multiple photos. I actually don't know how this works, taking photos in Zoom, but Jody will be here to assist us with that. Um, and also every uh, semester during the Capstone experience, we um, have an opportunity to recognize a student, um, one of your colleagues and um, peers um, who is um, nominated um, by uh, program faculty um, as a recognition for their um, achievement and contributions, um, both inside and outside of the classroom to the higher post-secondary education program. And so this year we'll have an opportunity to do the same. And what I'm going to do is just share very briefly um, what um, one nominator said about this particular student um, before I announce who the student is. And, and again, we, um, and Lindsay, Dr. Dipple, who is on the call, normally does this part and does it much more eloquently than I do as I <laughs> fumble through this process. But it's really an opportunity for us to uh, recognize a, a peer who, um, who has made uh, significant contributions, who has also impressed upon faculty with their dedication, not simply in this course, but throughout the program, um, and is therefore worthy of the, the nomination. We usually will hand you a piece of paper um, or a certificate of, um, of an award um, framed. Um, we will have to connect after this in order to pass that along to you. Um, but one nominator said about uh, this student, that this student is extremely engaged, um, they also demonstrate a high level of intellectual uh, curiosity, um, and they also not only work well with students, but um, embrace uh, collaboration, um, and that this student in particular deserves recognition for their outstanding contributions that they made to the learning um, environment within and across classrooms. And so without further ado, that student is Dakota Weber. So let's give Dakota a round of applause. And also, Dakota, congratulations. I know you didn't know this was happening. Um, you and I can connect after to make sure that you get your certificate and award. But again, congratulations um, and for uh, a, an award that's well deserved. Okay. You. Yes, you're welcome. You're welcome. All right. So we're going to stop there. Again, thank you for everyone who um, came and visited with us. We'll ask for the students and program faculty um, and mentors to stay on so that we can get one picture. Um, and we will share that out with everyone as well.